hospital mortality rates following inpatient surgery vary widely across the country. Previously, researchers attributed this to different post-surgical complication rates at the highest mortality hospitals versus the lowest. A new national study at the University of Michigan, published in the current issue of the New England Journal of Medicine, demonstrates that this is not the case. With this research at the University of Michigan, we sought to understand whether surgical mortality rates varied across hospitals in 2009. If so, we hope to better understand what types of complications were accounting for the high mortality rates at some hospitals. Our first major finding was that mortality rates with inpatient surgery vary widely from 3% at the best hospitals to over 6% at the hospitals with the high mortality rates, a factor of twofold. Second, we found to our surprise that there was no variation in complication rates. The high mortality and the low mortality hospitals had exactly the same rates of complications. It's important to understand why patients die after surgery in the first place. They go from having an uneventful course after their operation to having that first complication, that first domino, that subsequently leads to other complications that gets them into the ICU, that leads to multi-system organ failure, and ultimately to death. We found no evidence that hospitals varied in the likelihood that patients had that first domino, that first complication. Instead, the low mortality hospitals were much more proficient in keeping people from suffering more complications and from ultimately dying after they had that first complication. Prior to our study, the general assumption was that high mortality hospitals simply had higher complication rates. We were quite surprised to find that that's not true. Hospitals generally have very similar rates of complications, both overall and with particular types of complications. The main finding of this study is that what distinguishes high quality hospitals and low quality hospitals is how proficient they are at rescuing people once that first complication has happened. We believe it has something to do with the quality and the quantity of the nursing staff that's on the floor, the relationships between the doctors and the nursing, for example, whether nurses are afraid to call the doctor at nighttime, an additional factor is the availability of rapid response teams, the extent to which hospitals have dedicated teams whose sole job it is to rescue patients once they first get into trouble on the floor. The implications for those findings is it gives us a much better sense about where we should be looking if we hope to fix the problem of high mortality rates with surgery. Rather than focusing only on what the surgeon does in the operating room, we need to focus on what's happening in the wards and in the ICU after surgery. Our study was not designed to identify the single silver bullet underlying why some hospitals are more successful than others in rescuing people after surgical complications. However, a patient in need of a major operation should be thoughtful about choosing where and by whom their surgery is performed.